Good morning, students. Today, in this HS first year class, we are going to discuss theme two, titled "Writing and City Life." And today, we shall discuss part three of it. We had already finished. two classes on this particular theme that is the theme 2 in which we had made discussion on the ancient city of mesopotamia which is located in between the two rivers named the tigris and the euphrates situated in present iraq and we had discussed how for the first time in the world the city life of the human being began and in this connection we had discussed various aspect of such development today we shall mainly discuss urbanization in south mesopotamia temples and kings this is a long uh, aspect of the entire theme to and for that reason we had divided the long this particular long aspect into various subtitles so now i shall discuss the portion which is subtitled the temple cities from 5000 bce in south mesopotamia there began to develop human settlements and when the human settlements began to grow gradually there emerged the earliest cities at first they are developed the villages and after 2000 years approximately they are started to grow the cities some of these cities gradually developed around the temple the early settlers began to build and rebuild temples in their villages now the settlers who settled in the villages first of all they had some religious deities they believed in some sort of religion in some sort of deities and they used to worship those deities for their own protection and for their own security in life and in order to do the well being of the settlement as they believed they wanted to please the deities or gods and goddesses and therefore they started to build temples gradually centering around these temples they have started to grow the cities The earliest known temple was built with unbreaked bricks. The first temple known so far was built with unbreaked bricks. The it was built with bricks but bricks were not baked in fire. They were unbreaked bricks and with those unbreaked bricks they built the first temple. later on baked bricks were used later on they started more developed type of bricks baked in fire and it was harder than the unbaked bricks one of such temple was built in the city of ur temples were believed to be the residence of gods now the people believed that the gods reside in the temples 
the temple of ur was dedicated to the moon god and inanna the god is of war and love the people of ur they believed moon as their god and they they made the residence from the moon god that is the temple and as well as another goddess was there her name was inanna she was the goddess of war and love temples became larger over time at first perhaps it was uh, a single room temple gradually the constructions increased and temples became larger and larger over time those were not like ordinary houses the construction and design of the temples were different from the ordinary houses there were several rooms around the courtyard and temples were surrounded by walls and had two gates for in and out the gods were considered as the theoretical owner of everything for example the agricultural fields fisheries the herds of the local communities whatever the sources of income the people had the people believed that the owner of everything was god in time processing of produce for example oil pressing grain grinding spinning weaving of woolen clothes etc every social activities were done in front of the god in the temples when the people they produced the food grains or they produced the oil seeds or they caught fish from the fisheries Uh, or they wanted to spine some clothes or uh, we, um, it's they wanted the weaving of the woolen clothes all the works they used to do in the temples in front of the god because god was believed to be the owner of all these things now after uh, making the processing of the produce for example oil pressing grain grinding and then spinning and weaving on woolen clothes etc some of these were did uh, were given to the god as the offerings by the rest were distributed among the people because they needed this for their survival organizers of the production system were considered to be someone above the general householders now this distribution what the people produced a part was given to god as the offering and the rest was distributed among the people but there were some organizers who who undertook the task of distributing the products made by the people among the people those organizers they were regarded as someone special in the society they were treated as one above the general householder they were not at the socially at the same level as the general people or the common people they were treated as someone whose position is higher than the common people they were the distributors of the produce and plow among the people in the city they used to do is to distribute the produce and plow to cultivate for cultivation among the uh, people in the city they were the employer of the merchants and keeper of written records of transactions i had referred about the written clay tablets and those organizers they used to manage to keep the record of the transactions done with the people and transactions of trade and commerce hazards of agriculture now the prime activity that the people used to do at that time was agriculture and agriculture uh, was not a very easy task although the land was fertile in mesopotamia and why 
it is it was fertile i had discussed in my previous classes and in spite of natural fertility agricultural activities in mesopotamia had some hazards the channels of euphrates very often became flooded with too much of water and washed out crops i had told you in my last class when i discussed on the geography of mesopotamia that although mesopotamia is basically a desert area but there were uh, many channels of the river euphrates which are flowing through the entire territory and these channels served the purpose of irrigation at the time of agriculture because the euphrates river carried water from the uh, mountains from where uh, she uh, the river is coming and with this water the channels were always uh, filled up and they served as the irrigation natural irrigation system for the people who used to do agriculture in mesopotamia now sometimes those channels of euphrates became flooded with too much of water and washed out crops sometimes these channels changed their course sometimes they used to change their course when it was there was too much of flood the channels used to change the course and used to flow through the villages as a result the villages of mesopotamia were often shifted from place to place they had to shift from one place to one another place the villagers of mesopotamia due to this region and therefore agriculture was disturbed and had some hazards and it was the natural hazards there were man made hazards too the settlers who resided at upstream of the channels channels are flowing from up to down up from upland to the downwards so the villages which are there in the uplands they uh, the villages which were there uh, in the uplands of the streams they used to collect the uh, most of uh, we used to collect most of the water of the channels for their own use that is for the use of agriculture as a result what happened the lower streams had little water to flow for the villages which are which were situated at the downstream near the downstream so it caused deficiency of water to the settlers residing at the downstream of the channels the settlers who settled over the villages which which were situated near the downstream of those channels they suffered from the deficiency of water since the villages which were situated at the upstream of the channels they used to take the major part of water from the channels for their own use sometimes the villagers themselves neglected cleaning and cleaning out of out the silt of the channels and it caused a blockage of the natural flow of water further down now sometimes what happened the villagers they used to neglect the cleaning out of the silt the you all know the rivers they carry silt from the mountains and Uh, with their water and silts are need this silt is needed to be cleaned out time to time otherwise the flow of natural flow of uh, water mm, uh, will be hindered will be blocked but the villagers uh, of mesopotamia they need neglected the cleaning out of the silt therefore they are uh, they and it caused the blockage of the natural flow of water the villagers of the downstream 
they did not get enough water and it caused some hazards. Thus, there were some hazards, there were some hazards, both natural and created, so far as agriculture was concerned. There were warfare. There were frequent warfare among the different communities. The different communities they used to fight with each other and they used to fight wars. The victim and the, those communities were under the under a chief. The victorious chiefs used to distribute the booty looted from the defeated community among his own people. When they are used to take place a war, the victorious chief used to loot the uh, wealth of the uh, defeated community and the looted booty was distributed among the among his own people that is among the people of the victorious community the prisoners were captured from the defeated, defeated community some uh, persons some men and women were also imprisoned from the defeated community and they were employed as the servants or as the guards uh, and they had the status of the slaves these chiefs or warlords now chief of a community who were also the warlords they were the military person used to increase their influence in this way gradually when they acquired power they began to pay attention to the material well-being of their people they started to pay attention for the development of the people they also undertook initiative for mischief tip to beautify the temples of their cities with precious stones and metals naturally they had a belief that they needed the blessings of the god uh, whom they worshipped and they wanted to please the god by beautifying the temples with precious stones and metals they offered valuable booty to the god to please the later they began to send messengers to the far away countries to fetch valuable stones metals etc and we already had seen a story of such messenger and a king named en parkar from an epic written on king en markar of ur these chiefs also organized distribution of wealth among their subjects and it was also through temples growth and extension of cities there were villages in the settlements apart from the cities now uh, only a city cannot uh, uh, cannot be sufficient for a society i had told you the cities must be accompanied by the villages at first they are developed the villages then they are developed the cities so there were cities in the settlements apart from the uh, sorry, sorry so there were villages in the settlements apart from the cities the chiefs encouraged the villagers to live closer to the city so that in times of war with any other community he could rapidly enroll men in his army now the chief of the community he used to live in the city and he encouraged the villagers to uh, uh, to make villages closer to the city because when there would be any war with any other community the chief would require some men as army because he at that time there was no standing military for any uh, chief, uh, for for any community or for any chief at the time of war the common people used to serve the chief as the army so his interest was that if the villagers were near the city then he could rapidly collect his army in times of need people living in the villages also like to live near the city because in the city there would be the arrangement for better protection and the time of an outside attack 
from any other community, the villagers, villagers needed security and that would be uh, received better and protection would be received better if they lived uh, near the city. So from both sides, there was the interest uh, to live uh, along with the city. Probably the villages which were closer to the city gradually marched to the city itself. Thus, the city of Urk around 3000 BCE grew to the enormous extent of 250 hectares. Twice as large as Mohenjo-daro would be in the later century. Thus, around 3000 BCE, the city of Urk became a, an enormous city. It had 250 hectares area and it was twice large than Mohenjo-daro, which developed in India in the later century. Mohenjo-daro developed in 2500 BC in India. It was uh, double in area than Mohenjo-daro. At the same time, dozens of villages around Ur found deserted. So what happened? It is found that the villages which were near the Urk city, they became deserted. All the people who lived in the villages, they had come within the city of Urk and started to live in the city and they left their villages deserted. Dozens of villages, they became deserted at that time. By 2800 BCE, the total area of Urk was extended to 400 hectares. That means within 200 years, the total area of Urk was extended double, that is 400 hectares. So in this way, the cities gradually was extended, were extended and extended and the villages which were close to the city, they marched to the city itself. Common people and war captives, construction works. Common people and war captives had to work for the rulers or more specifically for the temples. Now common people were not very much independent. So also the war captives, they were um, just like the slaves and they had to work, both the common groups had to work for the rulers and more specifically for the temples. The people's service to the ruler was compulsory. They were bound to serve the ruler. Those who were put to work were paid rations. Group by group, they used to serve the ruler or the temple and they were paid rations for their, this period. Hundreds of ration lists have been found which gave against people's names the various quantities of grains, clothes or well allotted to them. So, in the clay tablets, there were the ration leads, lists. Uh, for example, uh, some food grains, some clothes or well were allotted in the names of the people uh, to whom this ration was granted. It, was, it has been estimated that one of the temple took 1500 men working 10 hours a day. In a temple, around 1,500 men used to work a day and they had to work 10 hours a day. They had to serve, serve the temple primarily for temples, enlargement for temples, construction works. The rulers commanded construction works of the temples. The people and cap the captives fetched stones or metals owed to come. And the construction works of the temples were done at the command of the chief or the ruler and the people or the captives, they served as the laborers, they used to fetch stone or metal ore uh, which, you had, which uh, came from, from outside to the city 
they made bricks or laid bricks for the temples sometimes they used to go to a distant country to bring some suitable materials for the construction of a temple and in the epic of enmarka on enmarka uh, we had seen such a picture around 3000 bce there took place a great technical advancement in the city of bur in the construction of temples around 3000 bc it is seen that in the city of ur there took place a great technical advancement particularly in the construction works of the temples bronze tools became used for different crafts they used to work with the bronze tools to make some artistic activities in the construction works architects learned to construct brick made columns previously they used to made columns of the buildings with wood but gradually they found when the temples started to become larger and the roofs of the halls also became larger naturally weight of the roof became uh, heavier and heavier so the wooden columns were not sufficient to bear such a large roof of a large hall so they started making brick made columns and the architect architects or of that period they discovered or discovered the system how to make the brick made columns which could bear the weight of the roofs of the halls larger than before hundreds of people were put to work for making and baking clay cones that could be put into the walls of the temple temples painted with different colors creating colorful mosaic hundreds of people they used to make and bake clay stones with clay they used to make some cones designer cones and with this designer cones were painted with different colors and thus colorful mosaic was created to decorate the temple floor as well as the walls and the roof beautiful sculptures were attached to the walls made with valuable important imported stones not only mosaic but beautiful sculptures were attached to the walls of the temples and those sculptures were made with valuable stones and stones were not local they were imported from the outside countries there took place a landmark in the technological development with the invention of potter's wheel by this time potter's wheel is invented was invented and with the potter's wheel i hope you have the idea about the potter's wheel with the potter's wheel the uh, potter's in the potter's workshop a uh, dozens of pots were being made of the similar size in this way magnificent constructions were done in the in ancient mesopotamia around 3000 bce thus to conclude it may be said that settlements began in mesopotamia around 5000 bce gradually there grew the cities at first there were villages gradually there started to grow the cities the earliest cities grew centering around the temples the temples were believed to be the residence of gods which who were theoretically the owners uh, of land fishery herds etc uh, which provided the human being the uh, source of income the temples were the centers of all cultural social and economic activities there existed a group of organizers of all such activities from the temples headed by a chief or a ruler the chief commanded the community in times of war with the other community 
the rulers were the builders and beautifiers of the temples the captives of war and local people paid labor for the construction and beautification of temples we have seen just now centering around the construction and beautification of the temples there took place a great technological advancement in mesopotamia around 3000 bce now uh we may see these two pictures in image number 1 uh we can see a temple of urk you may notice how vast and how magnificent construction and there is a courtyard around which the rooms uh, were made for the uh, uh, living of the gods and the organizers of the temple in image 2 we may see a picture of a ruler of mesopotamia a bearded man having a stick in his one hand he is sitting on a chair and from the from his posture or position of sitting we may assume that uh, he the as a ruler he uh, possessed some extra ordinary higher position in the society and power in the society this is the uh, indoor architecture of a temple in mesopotamia with mosaic uh, you may notice how the magnificently and how nicely the mosaic was done on the wall as well as the columns of the hall and it was done uh, in 3000 bc in mesopotamia and this is the picture of it temple inside picture of a temple so this much for today thank you